In this video, we're going to look at how to calculate the overall energy change for a reaction using the bond energies of the reactants and products. Let's recap what bond energies actually are. The atoms in a compound are held together by bonds. The diagram here shows the covalent bonds holding together the atoms in a molecule of butane. For butane to react, bonds in the reactants must be broken. This process absorbs energy, so it's an endothermic process. The atoms must then be rearranged and new bonds are formed to create the products. Forming bonds is an exothermic process, so it releases energy. The bond energy is the amount of energy that's required to break a bond between two atoms. It's also the amount of energy that's released when that bond is formed. This table shows us the energy required to break two different bonds, a carbon-carbon bond, which requires 347 kilojoules per mole to break, and a carbon-hydrogen bond, which requires 413 kilojoules per mole to break. We can use this information to calculate the energy required to break all the bonds in a molecule of butane. We need to look at the types of bonds that are present in a molecule of butane and how many there are of each type. For the carbon-carbon bonds, there are one, two, three of these bonds in a molecule of butane. If each of these bonds requires 347 kilojoules per mole to break, we'll need to multiply that number by three to calculate the total energy required to break all the carbon-carbon bonds. That would be 1,041 kilojoules per mole. We also have some carbon-hydrogen bonds. In a molecule of butane, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these bonds. Each of these bonds requires 413 kilojoules per mole to break. So 10 times 413 means we would need 4,130 kilojoules per mole to break all the carbon-hydrogen bonds in a molecule of butane. To calculate the total energy needed to break all the bonds in a molecule of butane, we'd add these numbers together, and that would be 5,171 kilojoules per mole. Here's a couple of practice questions for you to try. Calculate the energy required to break all the bonds in methane and all the bonds in propane. Pause the video and give these a try. You'll need to use the bond energies table in the top right of the slide. In a molecule of methane, we have some carbon-hydrogen bonds. In each molecule, we have one, two, three, four of these bonds. Each bond requires 413 energy to break. That means to break all the bonds in an atom of methane, we would need 1,652 kilojoules per mole. Propane has some carbon-carbon bonds. In a molecule of propane, there are one, two of these bonds. Each carbon-carbon bond requires 347 kilojoules per mole to break, so we need to do 2 times 347. That means to break all the bonds in a molecule of propane, you would need 694 kilojoules per mole. There are also some carbon-hydrogen bonds. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of these bonds. Each of those carbon-hydrogen bonds requires 413 energy to break, so we do 8 times 413, which means that we would need to put in 3,304 kilojoules per mole. The total to break all of these bonds would be 694 plus 3,304, and that would be 3,998 kilojoules per mole. The overall energy change is the net energy released or absorbed during a reaction. Remember that bonds in the reactants have to be broken, which is an endothermic process. The atoms have to be rearranged, and then new bonds are formed to create the products, which is an exothermic process. The overall energy change is equal to the bond energies of the reactants minus the bond energies of the products. For example, calculate the overall energy change of this reaction. This table of bond energies gives us bond energies for lots of different types of bond. We won't need to use all of them for this question. We just need to look at which bonds are in the reactants and which bonds are in the products. We'll start with the reactants. There are some carbon-hydrogen bonds in methane. We have one, two, three, four of these bonds. Each of these bonds has a bond energy of 413 kilojoules per mole. That means we need to do four times 413. That means we need to put in 1,652 kilojoules per mole to break all those bonds. We also have some oxygen double bonds. We have one, two of those bonds. 
and each of those bonds requires 498 energy to break. If we do 2 times 498, we'll need to put in a total of 996 kilojoules per mole to break those oxygen double bonds. The total of the bond energies for the reactants is 1,652 plus 996, which is 2,648 kilojoules per mole. Now we need to work out the energy that's released when we form the products. In the products we have some carbon-oxygen double bonds. We have one, two of these bonds. Each of these bonds releases 805 kilojoules per mole when it's formed. We need to do 2 times 805, which is 1610 kilojoules per mole, to form all of those bonds. We then have some hydrogen-oxygen bonds. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 of these bonds. Each of them releases 464 kilojoules per mole when it's formed, so we need to do 4 times 464. That means they will release 1,856 kilojoules per mole when they form. The total energy released is 1,610 plus 1,856, which is 3,466 kilojoules per mole. To calculate the overall energy change, we need to do the bond energies of the reactants minus the bond energies of the products. That would be 2,648 minus 3,466, which gives us an overall energy change of minus 818 kilojoules per mole. Because the overall energy change is negative, that means the chemicals have less energy at the end of the reaction, so energy must have been released. That tells us that this reaction is exothermic. Here's a practice question for you to try. Calculate the overall energy change of this reaction. You can use the bond energies table on the right. You will not need to use all the bonds. Just find the ones that are relevant to this question. Pause the video and give this one a go. We'll start with finding the bond energies of the reactants. We have some hydrogen bonds. There's only one of those. This bond requires 436 kilojoules per mole to break. One times 436 is 436 kilojoules per mole. The second type of bond we have is a chlorine-chlorine bond. We only have one of these two, and this requires 243 energy to break. That means we also need 1 times 243, which is 243 kilojoules per mole. The total of these two is 436 plus 243, which is 679 kilojoules per mole. We can then move on to the bond energies for the products. We have some hydrogen-chlorine bonds, we have one, two of these bonds. Each of these bonds releases 432 kilojoules per mole when it's formed. 2 times 432 gives us a total of 864 kilojoules per mole released when the products are formed. To calculate the overall energy change, we do the bond energies of the reactants minus the bond energies of the products. That would be 679 minus 864, which would be 185 kilojoules per mole. Thank you for watching, I hope the video was helpful for you and I'll see you in the next one.